Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in crypto. They have a amount of bite-sized pieces. Today, just like the thumbnail suggests, there is some fake news and even I got caught up in it. So we're going to talk about some fake news and it looks like maybe potentially a little pump and dump. We'll take a look at what's going on. But this was all about Ripple and the XRP case with the SEC. We're also going to take a look at uh, Jerome Powell giving us a little bit of clarity about what the United States wants to do as far as crypto and digital assets. We're going to take a look at Plan B's stock to flow, or more importantly, some of his technical analysis about where things are going for uh, not just this month, but the next two months, and it's pretty exciting. Also, we'll take a look at uh, volcano power and Bitcoin being used in El Salvador. And lastly, I think this is the most important story, honestly, is uh, Visa partnering up with Ethereum. So we'll get to all those things, but first let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is Friday, it is late, a lot of things going on, but I had to do this video because of this stupid fake story, but uh, it's pretty good. But hey, total market cap, look at that, busting through 2.1, almost 2.2 trillion. So, you know, like a couple hundred billion, not a big deal. We just call that a Friday here in Cryptoville. If you're from traditional markets, welcome. Uh, this would be crazy to you, but it's really not for us. Anyhow, Bitcoin daily sentiment, uh, 59 of 100, and uh, we're using trade the chain for sentiment analysis. Coins up across the board. I mean, let's just be honest. It's just huge. So Bitcoin, 24-hour change, 11%. Ethereum, 11%. Cardano, 7%, 10%. The big winner, Solana, at 16%. 13% for Polkadot, 10% for Uniswap. Look, uh, if you bought the dips like uh, I have, <laughs> it's a pretty good day. Also look out, man, Axie Infinity just crushing it. 52% for the day. Sweet Mary and Joseph, that is huge. Anyhow, that's going on the market. I mean, it's a great day. Uh, these are the days we live for, and I think the best is yet to come. I'm gonna tell you why. So first of all, before I get into all that, let's take a look at the fake story of the day. And um, this one got me. This one actually, I was sent uh, this article by a friend. It was from, it was in Yahoo News. And Yahoo News had actually picked it up from another publication. And uh, I had actually tweeted this out that uh, the SEC and Ripple had settled their case. And uh, I was like, wow, this is pretty good. But then within like 10 minutes, this is what's great about Twitter, because in YouTube, I can put this video out, but it's very slow. On Twitter, everything happens just like that. And everyone's like, this is not real, this is fake. And I was like, oh, I took it down immediately and didn't spread any kind of goodwill, which could have led to a pump and dump. And uh, this is what's going on. And before I get on, go on, let's just make sure. So XRP right now is up uh, a whopping, gosh, what are we at? 9%, 9% for XRP for 24 hours. Hopefully it's just because the entire market is up and not because of this dumb story that even I fell victim to. So this is what we got. So in this one, uh, there was a press release posted on news platform Access Wire. That was the first one. Say the SEC had dropped its charges against the company. The too good to be true hoax was syndicated by Yahoo Finance. That's where I saw it. And then made the rounds on social media. And I stopped that immediately as fast as I could because I'm like, oh my God, I got, uh, I got, I got hoodwinked. I got bamboozled. And uh, this is from Ripple. They say that uh, we are working to get it taken down, but totally false and not sent uh, by us. And this is from uh, DAI, Digital Asset Investor, big XRP fan. And he uh, sent a tweet out to the uh, lawyer of uh, Ripple. Said, hey man, is this real? He said, no, it's fake. And that's pretty much it. And uh, I will say it's pretty disappointing that uh, these publications pick it up so fast and uh, what happens, but this time worked out okay. However, a bogus announcement about Walmart partnering with Litecoin made the price of the altcoin jump roughly 30% on September 13th. So when people go, ah, just go to the source, just go to the source, go to the source, go to the official channels. Well, look at this. After the news was picked up by several mainstream media outlets, and even the official Litecoin account on Twitter was like, yeah, we're working with Walmart. So yeah, invest in us. And that's what happened. So uh, I think what happened here someone got the better of us and uh, said hey this is actually being uh, uh stopped and this is really market manipulation at its finest now uh we would rather have market manipulation go to the top than go down but it is a spade of spade well, let's call it a spade of spade it's market manipulation man manipulation and shouldn't be done so uh, on this one hopefully we can uh, stop the flow of misinformation and go from there anyhow let me know what you think about that in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece about, and this is pretty cool, Fed Clarity. And uh, what we got here, this was uh, a little snippet uh, from Congressman Ted Budd. Ted Budd was interviewing uh, Jerome Powell, the Fed chairman. And uh, I'm just going to listen to it. 37 seconds. Check this out. 
as a matter of policy, is it your intention to ban or limit the use of cryptocurrencies like we're seeing in China? No, and, and I, I immediately realized I misspoken there. I didn't mean to, to take the word cryptocurrency out of that sentence. And I, I would say fairly widely understood that central bank digital currencies could perform some of the, some of the, uh, could make. Uh, but no intention to ban. Less, uh, no intention no, to ban. No intention to ban them, but they're, you know, the, Stable coins are, are like money market funds, they're like bank deposits, but they're to some extent outside the regulatory perimeter, and it's, it's appropriate that they be regulated. Same activity, same regulation. So yeah, great news. I mean, this is exactly what we want to hear. The thing is, though, is that uh, you have to remember that uh, the Federal Reserve is about as federal as Federal Express. Uh, they are not a part of the government. Uh, they are an, uh, another entity outside. However, they do set monetary policy. And uh, so when we, we talk about the Fed has no intention to ban cryptocurrencies, it's not like the Fed can ban anything. They, they can't. They would have to go through the legal process. They would have to go to the high courts and so on and so forth. But it is reassuring to hear that Jerome Powell is saying, no, we don't really want to do that, but we do want to regulate central bank digital currencies because that really competes with the dollar, and that's pretty much what it is. And that's fine. Look, I know people, it's not a very popular opinion. I think we should have a little bit of clarity. Worked out pretty well for the internet back in the 1990s. Allowed it to flourish. Gives people clarity. We can move on. So this, I think, is something that was desperately needed in this time of uh, Super Gensler getting out there and trying to say everything's a security. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And let's move on to our next piece. And this was a, a good one because it uh, shows us where things are going. And I always like to see what's happening. This is uh, from... Plan B, uh, famous from stock to flow. And he talks about right here, he says, look, he goes, here's the numbers. And it says, uh, these are the, he calls them floor prices, but this is the closing price. You know, some people said, eh, it's, the, it's, it's uh, the lowest price in the month or it's the closing price in the month. And like, yeah, it's closing price. That's what, I, that's, that's what I got from it. And he says, look, uh, August closing price is gonna be 47K, September was 43K. Let's take a look at uh, how he did so uh, here we have monthly candles and not the wicks. We don't really care about that, but the closing, right? The close was a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit 44, 43, 7, somewhere around there, 43, 8, somewhere around there. And then uh, over here you had, so, uh, yeah, or sorry, excuse me, 47, excuse me. So, because it was a green one. So this one, he's right, 47 and 43. So now his next targets, uh, October, is he's looking at uh, 63K. Okay, he's been right so far. November, 98K, December, 135K. Great, so when people hear Plan B, they automatically think this is the stock to flow. It's not, this is not the stock to flow. And he, see, he makes it very clear right here. He says, to be clear, the worst case floor model is not, I repeat, not based on stock to flow. It's based on price and on-chain data, like I wrote in the June 20 tweet. So, so great that August closed 47K and September is now around 43K, but it says nothing about stock to flow. His stock to flow is actually a little inaccurate. He says it should be 100,000 now. So what he's talking about is on-chain analysis and TA to get these things, and he's been right so far. So uh, right now, I think uh, I will go with these numbers. I like these numbers. I don't know if 63 is going to hit. He's been right so far, but that seems kind of far. I would say somewhere in the 50s, high 50s, mid 50s. I'd be happy with that. I think everybody else would be. So let me just think about that in the comments section. Let's move on to our second to last piece. So this is interesting because there's this big uh, uh, hullabaloo about what's going on as far as like, ah, Bitcoin is not environmentally sensitive and it's using up too much power and blah, blah, blah. And the president of El Salvador goes, oh yeah, hold my beer because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use volcanoes to run Bitcoin mining. And he did it. I'll be darned. This is what's going on. So I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to show you uh, some of these great pictures. He goes, look. Uh, I've just instructed the president of L LA La GOSV, our state-owned geothermal, geothermal electric company, to put up a planned offer facilities for Bitcoin mining with very cheap, 100% clean, renewable, no emissions energy from all volcanoes. This is going to evolve fast. And uh, then also scrolling down, he says this, our engineers just informed me that they dug a new well that will provide approximately 95 megawatts of 100% clean, zero emissions geothermal energy from our volcanoes. Starting to design a full Bitcoin mining hub around it. What you see coming out the well is pure water vapor, which will be energy. So uh, these, I, let me correct myself. These are just the first steps. It hasn't been done yet, but uh, these are things that are going. This is on the side. 
uh, where all the geothermal energy is coming from as far as the volcano. So it uh, looks like they're going to go through with it. And then to me, I think this is a step in the right direction. Let's see if it all plays out. Anyhow, that is that about volcanoes and Bitcoin. And lastly, I want to talk about Visa and Ethereum. I think this is uh, probably one of the most interesting stories I've uh, read about partnerships. So real quick, Visa working on interoperability platform for stablecoins. The channel will allow cryptos to be transferred between different blockchains with Visa being at the forefront. What is going on here? There's two snippets. The Universal Payments Channel, or UPC, aims to allow the cryptocurrencies to be transferred between different blockchain networks. The UPC tech can play an important role between private stablecoins and public CBDCs by providing permissioned access, that's a big word, permissioned access for whitelisted stablecoins to be interoperable with CBDCs. So that's great uh, as far as like this article, but I want to dig deeper into it see, because I'm like, what is really going on here? This is from Decrypt. And really what it is, it's a layer two solution, pretty much universal payment channel. Project is still in its early stages like everything else. And if you want to take a look at what's going on as far as like cryptocurrency digital assets and the adoption level, just take a look at what's going on with Visa. Visa is one of the, you know, very older company that as far as just, just payments and that's about it. When you see what they're doing and how much money and time and manpower they're investing into crypto, you have to think to yourself, okay, this is going to be around for a while if Visa is coming out full swing. And I mean, even Visa has bought up NFTs. I know it's just for one thing, not too much, but when they're working with these crypto companies, I mean, with Circle and USDC, where do you think things are going? they see the writing on the wall. They're like, we don't want to be blockbustered. We're here for payments and crypto is here to take our lunch. Why don't we just, if you can't beat them, you might as well join them or at least partner up with them. I think that's what's going on. So in this situation, uh, I'll just go down here. Layer two solutions. So if you don't know, projects the process initial transactions on a separate layer from the underlying blockchain and uses the blockchain to finalize. So it, just like in El Salvador, it's not they're using Bitcoin, they're using Lightning Network. It's a layer two solution. All the transactions happen over there. And then the actual blockchain finalizes the transactions. Uh, so you get two things. You can use, you, you get the, the user can actually enjoy, like it says here, the transaction speed while enjoying the tamper-proof record of blockchain and the uh, very hard level of hacking that it would take as far as 51%. But here's the big thing. This is the last sentence. As far as Visa goes, that says the proposed base layer for its universal payments channel is Ethereum. Now, extrapolate that and think to yourself, how big will Ethereum be? I've been a big critic of Ethereum and their gas fees, and I think a lot of people uh, also have, but I was also a big uh, critic of, uh, of Bitcoin and those fees, and they got those solved with Lightning. So I think layer two solutions, a Matic and things like that can come about and just go, you know what? Yes, there are very high gas fees, but don't worry. We got a layer two solution and a layer three solution coming in the pipe. And guess what? We got Visa backing us. And if you uh, want to want to play the game, you got to have some ETH. So that is what's going on. And that is pretty much next to last. A little bonus uh, real quick. I sent out this tweet a couple of days ago. I said, uh, I'm going to start giving away tomato coin. And that is a real thing. It's built on uh, Cardano blockchain. And I'm going to be giving away thousands and thousands. I, I need to... I need to, to give it out to more people. I, gave it, I already gave a ton out to everybody who stakes with uh, D News, with the D News stake pool for Cardano. But uh, for every live stream, I'm going to start giving away um, thousands, tens of thousands, I don't know, of tomato coin because it's just sitting there right now. And uh, I want to just give it to people. So if you have a, um, a Daedalus or an Adalite or even a Yoroi wallet, uh, you can... Uh, come on over to any live stream I'm at and uh, I'll be giving away at random. I'm going to give away a bunch. And uh, the first one I'm going to do it is uh, with my friend Jerry Hall. He's over there in Costa Rica. We're going to talk tonight about a video I did yesterday about my lessons learned and all the all the things that I wish I would have known back when I first started investing in cryptocurrency and how I would position myself now. So I'll be on Jerry Hall's show tonight. I will link that in the description whenever Jerry gets around to give me the link and then we'll go from there. So look, 
Uh, that is it for today. So um, if you stuck with me all the way to the end, first, thanks. I appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, give it a thumbs up, give it a like. Also consider subscribing. Everything is time sensitive. So if you can subscribe, we do a video every single day to keep you up to date and you can make the best decision for your investments as far as crypto. Not financial advice, just financial opinion. Anyhow, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.